Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carol Distel, and welcome to Manufacturing Week. I'm here joined with Kirsten Schulte and Jerry Hill, who are off screen, um, and they are going to be helping me with this webinar. Uh, we have a number, we have four manufacturers that we are excited to showcase today. So I want, don't want to waste too much time, but there's a few things I do want to let you know. Um, first of all, is that uh, we will be having all the panelists speak first. So if there is um, any questions that you do have, please put them in the Q&A box and we will um, answer those following. If you do have a question, we will um, also, anybody who does present a question will be put into a pool to earn a $25 gift card. Um, we're doing 20 of those gift cards. So please send us your questions and we will answer as many of them as possible. Um, we also will be following up at the end when you close out the, um, the webinar, there will be a survey. So please complete that survey, let us know how we did. Um, and those, again, who will be completing the survey will also be um, put into a pool to earn some gift cards as well. So we want to hear your feedback and your and what you have to say. So with that, I would like to get started um, and introduce Heather Kluszewski. And so Heather, please welcome this morning and let us know a little bit about who you are and about your company. Okay, well, I am uh, Heather Kluszewski, and I am program manager at uh, Hayworth, which means that I oversee all of our uh, internship programs, our scholarship programs, um, and really working with students and teachers in the community about uh, career opportunities in manufacturing. And we are in the furniture industry, and so what I think is great about the furniture industry is I think that it is uh, creative. I think it's fun. I think it's adaptable. I think it's cool. It's innovative. And there are lots of opportunities for different types of careers. And those are just a few that I've listed um, for opportunities. So what I am sharing today is uh, actually utilizing our system that we use called Bluescape. And I'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. But I created this timeline that focuses on um, three different areas. Um, one is just down here. It's just some um, icons and some uh, different types of um, pictures about the times of the year. This here is about uh, technology. And the reason why technology is important and is, and is uh, correlated with furniture is because as technology has changed, that really does form on how we use our office and what office furniture needs are. And then this top line is about Hayworth and how we have grown throughout the years. So Hayworth is actually over 70 years old. So it was uh, started back in uh, the 1940s in GW Hayworth's garage, um, basically building out wooden toys, um, uh, wooden tie racks, wooden, wooden shoe racks, which is this right here. Um, and then he outgrew it. So he borrowed uh, $10,000 from his parents and um, created or built a plant and then he uh, bid on the Detroit Auto Workers Project, which was for office partitions and room dividers. So he won that bid. And from there, he actually formed Modern Partitions, which you see right up here, a picture of that. So furniture in the 1950s, you can see when he first started out, pretty minimal. So if you look at this picture here, you pretty much have a, a minimal desk and uh, some walls really not any technology at all, or the technology is really this person right here who is actually um, taking notes and would go back to the desk and then, uh, you know, um, uh, type something up or file or do letters. Um, but again, very minimalist when you look at the actual furniture needs. As we actually move into the 1960s, um, the needs in the system started to change some, where they actually needed to be more mobile, where parts could be moved and rearranged, again, as technology was starting to be used more within the office. So we also got into work services, storage units, shelves, lighting, and accessories. And so when I zoom into this picture, again, you can see on this particular uh, mobile desk, the wheels that are now on it that make this a very mobile piece that can be moved throughout the office. 
So then when we move into the 1970s, this was a big um, time for us, a big error for us, because we actually um, had one of our, our, our uh, biggest patents, which was a pre-wired panel, which is this right up here. And this actually put all of the electrical wiring inside the panels, which made it easy for um, the panels to be um, uh, snapped together and also then hid all of those cords that normally you could see. This was also the time frame that we changed our company name to Hayworth Inc. And we also went to Japan to benchmark Toyota for their quality process. This was something that we brought back to our manufacturing plants that we could actually use their techniques to streamline our processes so that we could make our manufacturing plant, uh, we could reduce our turnaround and we could increase the output. In the 1980s, um, we went global in the 1980s. And then we also moved into um, office seating. In the 1990s, we continued to expand globally, but we also expanded our product line. And that was everything from, um, we were now um, offering um, our, in fact, I'll zoom into this picture so I can show you a little bit better. This was one of the product lines that we got into, which was actually our raised flooring. And this puts all of the wiring underneath the floor here that you can see, which actually helps to distribute air. It, ha it helps to distribute the data. It helps to, um, with sound masking and of course, efficient um, reconfiguration as well. Then as we move into the 2000s, this um, two notable things in that time frame was that since the 1980s, we have been working to reduce waste and recycling. In 2009, we actually became zero waste to landfill. That was a huge, huge thing um, in manufacturing and that was a huge goal for us. So then when we rebuilt our Hayworth headquarters, um, we actually created this green roof here. And the green roof is actually helps with sound, it's cool and filtrates air and also helps with uh, insulation in the winter time. We have 11 different varieties of sedum, um, or sedum, excuse me, on top of that roof. So over 20,000 trays um, were made from recycled chair material to actually um, house that sedum on, again on top of the building. And then when we get into the 2000s, I mentioned about our Bluescape and I wanna show you something here real quick. So with our Bluescape, it started off from a design firm that actually, or excuse me, it started off with our designers, I should say, who used to pin up all of their um, drawings and all of their information as they were working on stuff, which wasn't very efficient and doesn't help with archiving. So one of our designers was at the Hard Rock Cafe and they came across the rock wall. And that was this virtual wall where all, this, all of this information was stored. So we reached out to a company in uh, California California to help us create the software. And when you think about this particular software, um, it's an infinite, I'd say it's an infinite uh, canvas or space where you can house all of your information and collaborate. So if you think about Disney World um, and how large Disney World is, so that's over 200 acres, that's actually how big just one canvas is that you can work in within Bluescape. So I'm gonna zoom out here so you can just see, this is just one little space that I'm working on in here. So all the information that you can um, keep and house in here, this, um, uh, uh, software has really truly helped us to collaborate, meet, share, and of course, develop ideas. And as we get into the 2020s, um, who we are today is we have over 400 patents. We have over 7,000 employees. We're in 120 different countries. And as we continue to really develop um, who we are as a company with, um, our, with our products, it all comes back to our culture and to our values. And, and so this, of course, I don't have time today to read it off, but you can find this on our website. But this really showcases who we are as a company, which really leads us then into how we design our products and our furniture. So we really take a look at the holistic side of also the employees. 
So this was one survey that we did about what actually um, affects employees' happiness. It was access to daylight. It was uh, the right technology. It was being able to have adequate storage and actually having a specific space where they work. So when we meet with uh, customers and clients, we talk to them about all of those things. But these are all the products. When I go back to uh, reminding you that when we started, it was with the uh, wooden tie racks. These are all the products we make today. Everything from seating to the walls, to the flooring, to technology, the workspaces, to storage, um, desks and tables, accessories. And all of these products is what we work with then on our customer to be able to create a space for them that really helps with um, their, their needs and making it a, um, a adaptable and adjustable and easy, especially with, again, us getting into the times we are right now. Um, this obviously is extremely important to be able to be adaptable. So uh, we are now going to share a video with you that will uh, hopefully give you some more insight to uh, Hayworth and who we are as a company and why it's so great to be in the furniture industry. Hello, I'm Ann Harton, Vice President of Global Human Resources at Hayworth. Hayworth is a family-owned furniture manufacturer based in Holland, Michigan, with offices, plants, and showrooms all over the world. Our founder, G.W. Hayworth, started the company in his garage more than 70 years ago, building shoe displays and tie racks. Through the leadership of his son, Dick Hayworth, we were transformed into a global business, closely resembling what we are today. And with Dick's son, Matthew, now chairman, we continue to grow, tailoring brilliant spaces for our customers, including some you may be familiar with, such as classrooms, offices, and lecture halls. Over the next few minutes, you'll hear from Hayworth members about what we do, how we operate, and what they find fulfilling about their jobs. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about Hayworth. Hayworth manufactures multiple different things that you would use in an office setting. We have anything from work surfaces all the way to lounge pieces, couches, different types of what we call soft seating. We also manufacture walls and those walls could be made out of glass, they could be made out of drywall. The internship program at Hayworth is phenomenal. Well, I had a really great internship experience. I joke that I'm the perpetual intern. So I started in 2015 here at headquarters in the facilities department. A lot of different experiences. Um, everyone did a really good job taking me under their wing, showing me the different parts of the company. The intern program here at Hayworth is a great program. It helps us get to know those students in our community and also provides them an opportunity to learn in a real life work example. Hayworth has provided me tremendous opportunities to grow as an individual, both in skills, with leadership, um, and just a, a basic understanding of what are my strengths and what do I need to work on, and then giving me all the opportunities to, uh, to, to improve personally as well. I found that my personal values fit with Hayworth's values very well, so I was like fitting in with family. Sometimes it never seems like we're satisfied, but that's a good thing. Um, we're, we're always trying to reach for the stars. We're always trying to accomplish our goals, but then understanding what's the next step. What can we do even better tomorrow that we're doing okay with today, but how can we continuously drive that improvement? Thank you for taking time today to watch this video. If you would like to learn more about Hayworth, please visit us at hayworth.com. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate um, you giving your, us the background and I already have some questions coming in. So I will be um, asking you. So get ready. Don't don't go anywhere. Um, Sarah, I'll take you off of mute. Um, if you want to unmute yourself and good afternoon. And thank you for for joining us um, this afternoon. Uh, please tell us a little bit more about who you are and who you represent in Barry County. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Whistler, and I work for FlexFab. We are main, mainly located in Barry County down in Hastings. 
Uh, we occupy five different buildings down here in Hastings, and then we have two up in Grand Rapids area. Uh, FlexFab is a silicone hose manufacturer. Um, I am the HR manager here, and I'll tell you a little bit more. I will be presenting today on why company culture matters. Um, and we've got a great video as well to show you that uh, tells a little bit about our company, and then we'll go through a PowerPoint as well, much like how they're. So if you want to switch to Hayworth or FlexFabs, go ahead. <laughs> So, you want to learn more about FlexFab? That's great. FlexFab has been an outstanding place to work since Doug DeCamp opened the doors in 1961, and we don't ever want that to change. We built a great work environment based on core values that we call hearts. Honesty, excellence, accountability, respect, teamwork, and support. I know what you're thinking, but that's the kind of thing you expect to hear from an executive, isn't it? Do we really live it out? Well, let's go ask the people who work here. I'm Bill Haywood, and I've worked at FlexFab for 28 years. I'm Joshua Haywood. I've been at FlexFab for just over three years. My name is Tim Larson. I've worked here for 40 years. My name is Scott Larson, and I've worked here for almost seven years. My name is Matt Larson, and I worked at FlexFab for four years. I grew up around FlexFab and in first grade told Dad that I wanted to uh, come work in the cubicle across from his because I could just see how important uh, the company was uh, to him. Since uh, I've been here for three years, uh, it's been amazing to see how I've been challenged and encouraged and continually uh, prompted to grow. One of the reasons I love working at FlexFab is the way they invest in every employee, regardless of position, title, or experience. Those looking to progress their career have access to our leadership training class, FlexFab Foundations. FlexFab will customize your personal development plan based on your goals. If your personal development goals include higher education, FlexFab offers 100% tuition reimbursement and other offsite training. Whether FlexFab is a step in your career or a place you want to stay long term, we want to be more than just a job. You've heard from our team. We are committed to our community, our culture, and building our teams with the best and the brightest. That's why we put the heart's values in place, and that's why we invest so much into our people. On behalf of the DeCamp family and the worldwide FlexFab team, thank you for spending a few minutes with us today. So that just gives you a little idea about our culture and who we are. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen as well. So why company culture matters. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about just company culture, culture in general and just a lot about what, what really makes up a company culture. And then I'll dive into a little bit more about FlexFab and the company that I work for and why I felt, feel like our company culture has been phenomenal for the last 59 years. So I'll go ahead and get started. So why company culture matters. Um, it, you know, you in the company culture, we need to keep our productivity levels high. Um, happy employees obviously tend to be more productive. Most of the time they'll show up for work on time. They tend to be more collaborative in groups um, amongst their other coworkers. Obviously, we, we will... You know, to build a company culture, we need to recruit top talent. The company's success can depend on if we attract the right talent for certain positions. Uh, retain more employees. Hiring and training tends to cuts into the company profits, and obviously we do not want that to happen. Um, and the productivity always increases when everyone at the company has been there long enough to perform well in their position. Reduce company turnover rates. With a positive organizational culture, however, you can make employees uh, more content in their jobs and therefore more likely to stay with the company longer. In a negative company culture, the turnover rate is high for the employees and the morale is definitely low. Um, cultivate a positive reputa reputation. I talk about that a little bit further um, of something that we put into our company creed, but brand awareness is more than just marketing your company to the public. And when people hear about a company with a great culture, they obviously are more interested in working for that company and exploring uh, what their pro products and services are about. We want to improve customer experience and each member of our team plays a role in creating positive customer experience that drives our growth. And when a company invests in developing a positive environment for the employees, then the business thrives. 
Um, we want to drive our innovation. There's evidence to suggest that corporate culture is a crucial factor in driving companies' innovation. And obviously, the biggest thing is we want to we want to save the company some money. Promo promoting a more positive uh, culture may actually help lower some costs, such as healthcare. It could potentially reduce your employee illnesses, um, related absences that may be correlated to that, and in turn, it saves the company some money which I'm sure if, if everyone has got um, an investment within their organization, they're going to want to do all of these things to help improve a company culture. So FlexFab, as you learned in the video, um, what is, why does company culture matter to us here at FlexFab? We opened our doors 59 years ago in 1961. Um, we are a family-owned organization, and our owner is Doug DeCamp. Mr. DeCamp opened it with a partner, and they split off. Um, many years ago, but since then, they've continued to focus on the following, which I want to focus today on our vision, our values, and our creed. Um, FlexFab is definitely more uh, than a company. It's uh, more of a culture of excellence and supplies. Sorry, I just got to find my notes. Um, excellent supplies of world-class products to some of the largest companies around the globe. Our, our proprietary processes of compounding rubber, calendaring, extruding, molding, and bonding silicone rubber, organic rubber, and reinforced materials makes our products world-class. Um, so obviously our company's been around 59 years. I, you know, I kind of attribute our company culture to some of our ancestors and some of the people who continue to be with us for 20, 30, 40 years. They are the ones, our employees are the ones that really generate our culture. And I hope, especially in HR, to continue this tradition and all of the new hires that we're bringing on is just continuing to establish our positive culture. The next slide is um, how we how we co uh, coordinate our vision for our organization. This is something we collaborate and do every year together. We um, each department will continue and develop a roadmap, and then we create a corporate roadmap on top of that. This is how we kind of stay connected. This is how we stay focused, and what are our deliverables? And we share those with our executive leadership, our um, team leaders, and we share them amongst the company. And we just communicate what what is that vision? What does that vision look like? for our organization. Um, this is So this is one of the tools that we use and we definitely all collaborate together. And then the next slide is our values. Um, this is something that we focus heavily on. We talk about this often. We In the video, we mentioned that we have an internal training program called FlexFab Foundations. And that's an internal training program that our associates can go through if if they choose to, um, if their attendance is good, if they um, don't have any discipline that's against them, they can participate in this internal training program. And we really, really hone in and talk a lot about our values. Um, so years ago, uh, the foundations team created this. It's our hearts values. We have passed out shirts with hearts on the back and you can read on your screen what those mean. So H is for honesty, E is for excellence, A is for accountability, R is for respect. T is for teamwork and S is for support. And I believe a year or two later after that, they, they added the word humble. We want our employees to be humble people. Um, we want them to be honest. We want them to be ethical. We want them to respect one another. We want them to collaborate as a team and be supportive. So these are really the values that we continue to focus on. And then next, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about our creed is um, what else, I mean, our creed, our values, our vision, those are all the three pillars that really um, help us generate what our culture is like here at FlexFab. The creed has been around since um, the company started back in 1961. Our creed, once again, on the screen is our value for our customers. It's our quality, quality of life for our employees. It's our service for our community. And it's a, our benefit for shareholders. We always talk about that. If we can take care of our customers, we can take care of our employees and the community, then the shareholders are automatically taken care of. Um, quality of life is one of those pillars for our employees. And we are building a culture of excellence by providing a challenging and stimulating work of environment, which recognizing each person's merit and creating opportunities for personal development. We believe in helping our employees excel by providing both on-site and off-site training. That's just one of the examples. 
And then this, all of this that I've discussed today is kind of why our company culture matters. I know during um, uh, the pandemic, during virtual learning, um, Zoom meetings, it's, it's very hard to continue to keep a positive culture. And we, as, as an employer, are doing our best we can um, to continue that. And the, one of the quotes, Patrick Lencioni is an author that um, I've actually had the chance to not personally meet, but I've seen him a couple of times presenting. And if, you know, he, he's one of those that um, is just very insightful. And I, I one of his quotes that I, I love hearing is organizational health is the single greatest competitive advantage in any business. And being in HR, I would say I'm all about the people. So if um, Patrick Lencioni, he's he's great. And if you, you definitely can check out his books. But these are just a couple um screenshots and pictures, the work-life balance is important here at PluxFab. Those are a couple of funny things up about, and I put the cultivate culture. It just, a, it doesn't take one of us. It takes a team of us. It takes the entire organization. It doesn't matter if you're the executive or CEO of the company, or if you work in production, um, all, all companies um, need every employee and um, it, there's more to manufacturing than, than just, you know, working in a factory or on a line. So Hope you learned a little bit about what company culture matters and I'll turn it back over to Carol. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was awesome. And I, I, I love your enthusiasm too for all of that. And it is a whole, it's, you know, you're part of that, but it is everybody being a part of that and buying into it. So it's great to see that positive culture at FlexFab. So I would like to move over. Now we have another Barry County, which is Bradford White. So I want to introduce both um, Brett and Haley, and to introduce yourselves and tell us more about um, Bradford White. Perfect. So Bradford White, we are located in Middleville, Michigan. We manufacture water heaters. Um, our facility is actually over a million square feet, and we employ about 1,500 employees. Uh, so that's a little bit about Bradford White. Uh, myself, I work in human resources. I'm an HR representative here. A little bit about my background, I attended Grand Valley. Um, I actually was originally an accounting major. Once I started taking classes, I really realized that it just wasn't for me. I wanted different challenges every day. I wanted more interaction you know, with the people, people who make the business run um, and tick every day. So naturally, uh, human resources was a great choice for me. Um, around February of 2018, I decided that I wanted to change. So I applied here at Bradford White and my, that was my last semester of college. Um, so I'm coming up on about three years here. It has been a great three years. Um, one of the main reasons I chose Bradford White was because I was really interested in labor relations um, and a manufacturing environment. And those are two things that I really, I really get to be involved with here. Um, so Bradford White overall, not just for human resources, it is a great place to work. We employ many different disciplines ranging from accounting, payroll, purchasing, engineering, IT, government affairs even, um, and many more. And of course, we have our production employees, which can range from our assembly team, so that's general production on the assembly lines, to our tank plant, where we fabricate tanks, um, even to apprenticeship programs and journeyman jobs. And I kind of wanted to touch on one of the unique programs that we have here at Bradford White, um, which is our BWC Scholars Program. So this is a really great opportunity for someone who might not know exactly what they want to do after high school. Uh, maybe they think they're thinking about college, but they're not really sure if it's right for them or not. Um, so this is a way that they can experience a manufacturing environment. Maybe that's a career path that they want to go down um, while going to a community college and seeing if that's what works for them. Um, so our scholars, they are paid employees. Um, so they're paid and they work up to about 30 hours a week here at Bradford White. Um, while they're attending school. It does have to be a local community college, so um, LCC, GRCC, KVCC, anything like that. And then what Bradford White does is we reimburse up to $175 per credit hour for about 15 uh, credits a semester for up to four semesters or two years. So that's about the time that a person needs to complete their associate degree. Um, so the cool thing about this program is that it doesn't have to be any type of degree that's related to manufacturing or to Bradford White. Um, an individual could go for interior design if they wanted to, or even, you know, nursing, anything that they'd like. It doesn't need to be manufacturing related. So that's really interesting. Um, if any students are interested in this program, we've got information on our website. Um, they can email us or call us um, and we can get them more information on that. 
I also wanted to quick touch on our apprenticeship program, which is pretty unique here as well. Um, so our apprentices are actually found from our seniority employee pool. So any of our employees here who are out of their probationary period are actually able to be considered um, for our apprenticeship program um, through the bidding process. So that's pretty neat. Um, and then from there, obviously, we do aptitude testing um, and internal interviews just to see who's going to be a great fit for that apprenticeship program. Um, and then lastly here, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things. Obviously, community is very important to Bradford White. We're settled right in the heart of Middleville, um, really surrounded by neighborhoods, and there's restaurants and Main Street just down the road from us. Um, so we do like to get involved in the community. Uh, we support local businesses, whether that's, you know, getting shirts made for any events that we might have, or even just our, you know, staff going out for lunches, the local restaurants, things like that. Um, we host blood drives here. Um, we also do community hiring events, events out, uh, out and about in Middleville and the surrounding community. Um, and like I said, we have our scholars program for local um, high school students or who, anyone who might be interested in that. Um, and we are also United Way participants. So overall, Bradford White has been great to me. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time working here. Um, and I'm sure Brent can say the same. Yes, and I enjoy working with Haley. I am Brent Buckwright, of course, of Bradford White Corporation. I was one of these young kids that was 18 years old looking for a job. I came to Bradford White pursuing that job and I found it and I've been here for 31 plus years. I have had everything from the manufacturing floor level, that nervous kid that thought my first day, I don't know what I'm gonna do, all the way up to a supervisor's position, to a general foreman's position, off to working as a program manager, assisting groups as large as 70 employees plus. I work closely with the quality engineering team, the engineering product design teams. I work with the floor level teams. That's what it's about here. And what I'm getting at is basically over the 31 years here at Bradford White that I've had, I have a family experience. This is my work family. And so when you think, hey, I'm leaving home, but guess what? You go and you get an interaction with the folks on the floor with yourselves and you learn about them. They learn about you, but it's about family here. We've created a family environment here at Bradford White that I've known for 31 plus years. And I want you guys to know whether it's I want to work on the floor as a manufacturing employee or maybe develop something further. I want to go on to maybe what Haley does, maybe what I'm doing, maybe just, hey, I want to be a part of that product design group. Maybe I just want to be able to see the quality portion of this. There's opportunities all over the place here at Bradford White. So you put that foot in the door here. And you're going to have those opportunities available. I just wanted to say also on that point, along with the family environment, I have a brother that has been a quality inspector here for 25 plus years. I also have a son that has been here for eight plus years, and he's in charge of our residential scheduling. So back to that family environment, that brings that here in its stability, its longevity in a job. And we here at Bradford White are proud of that. Um, along with some of the um, activities that Haley was reaching on too with the community, we've helped with a river cleanup here in Middleville. We've reached out through the Berry County Day of Caring, um, which I've been a huge part of too, just to go out and we're helping the areas to clean up the community. And that's a team effort on both the union side here and the corporation side. So we work together hand in hand. So once again, there's the family portion of it. Um, going on, we do have some other jobs here that if you're thinking, hey, my career is in manufacturing and you know what, I really like to weld. We have very good opportunities here for welding. We are one of the largest welding wire or users in the region. We have that here at Bradford White. And if you come in and you find out, hey, that's kind of what I want to do is be a welder. Well, this is a very good area to do that. So. Just think about it. Don't second guess yourselves on what your career path is. You're thinking, hey, I'm young. I don't know what I want to do. I tell you what, you're going to find it. And you're going to find out that we have all those opportunities here at Bradford White and we can bring that to you. Okay. So from here, I think we're going to maybe roll out our video of uh, Bradford White and we'll go from there. Manufacturing. You probably have a picture in your mind of what a career in manufacturing is like. 
but you might be surprised. Today's manufacturing facilities don't look like those of the past. And at Bradford White, we're at the forefront of the transformation in American manufacturing. Our facilities are state-of-the-art, high-tech operations where we build products with American pride. In fact, we have more than 1,500 people working to create new products, explore new technologies, and keep us focused on future success. You see, we do more than just make water heaters. We create products that change lives. Hot water is a vital necessity. It keeps us and our clothes clean. It sanitizes dishes and household items. That's why our water heaters, space heaters, combination heating, and water storage products are so important for homes, businesses, and our communities. At Bradford White, we're committed to excellence, to serving our customers who are professionals in the plumbing and heating industry. We're also committed to our team. We make sure they have the best equipment, the latest technologies, and the training and professional development necessary to do the job safely and succeed. And they do. My name is Lance Flairman. I've been at Bradford White for 30 years. I work in the maintenance department and I'm a maintenance laborer. I started out at Bradford White, I was shooting head screws. Today I'm a logistics supervisor. This June it'll be 20 years. Hi, I'm Tom Peck. I've been with Bradford White for 41 years and I am a pressure welder. Want to join a team that is American strong? Find out more here. I am Bradford White. I am Bradford White. We are. We are. We are Bradford White. This is Bradford White. Join our team. Oh, by the way, we do make water heaters that are quite simply built to be the best. Thank you, Bradford White. And I can actually say I have your water heater and it's amazing. So thank you very much. So <laughs> it's working great. And I just keep going down and dusting it off every once in a while in the basement. So thank you. Um, we appreciate that. Thank you. Much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Very, very good. So thank you. So I am going to wrap this up and move for our last two um, ADAC um, automation and Jorge and Tamika. So Jorge, I see you are up and ready. So tell us a little bit more about what you do. Most certainly. And uh, let me tell everyone, I mean, we just heard about from uh, three big companies uh, that there's nothing like manufacturing. Nothing like it. Nothing compares to it. So, all right. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, it is my sincere pleasure to be here with you on, on this beautiful afternoon. My name is Jorge Martel, and I am the Vice President of Manufacturing Operations for ADAC Automotive. I received my bachelor's in engineering from the Monterey Institute of Technology, and I also hold a master's in business administration. I have had the good fortune of performing different roles throughout my 25-year career, from manufacturing engineering to product design, program management, to customer service, sales and general administration. Never a dull moment in manufacturing. We are dealing with rapidly changing technology and innovations that which we had not seen before. As such, we all must continue to learn and develop the knowledge and skills necessary to adapt and thrive in a changing world. Let me tell you a little bit about ADAC Automotive, who we are and what we do, okay? Just, hopefully you can see this, but um, we are an automotive supplier and are the leader in North America in vehicle access systems. Think about vehicle access as the interface you all have to gain entry and exit to and from your vehicles. Our headquarters are located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we have over 1,175 associates in various locations across West Michigan. We are a family-owned, privately held company, and, and we heard about culture and the, the importance of, uh, of, uh, of that. West Michigan, I tell you, I'm from El Paso, Texas, and what I've seen uh, in West Michigan, family values, the culture, um, um, all that, uh, um, it, all the values and everything that that represents is just very impressive to me, being from a, a different part of, uh, of the country. We are proud to be in West Michigan. We are actually a global workforce. In essence, we have about 14,500 employees through an association that we call the BASTA Global Alliance. So this enables uh, ourselves to, to, to provide coverage to uh, our global customers around the world, okay? We are proud to be in West Michigan. 
And, and uh, our facilities are located in, in uh, Muskegon, three of them, and we have one in Saranac Manufacturing, okay? This enables us to, to provide our customers with uh, entire coverage. We also have a, a couple of facilities in Mexico to assist in, in uh, basically providing coverage for the local, local demand, okay? Our key products are door handles, painted trim, uh, exterior mirrors, and tailgate handles. The next slide will give you a better perspective of the products we make at Ada Automotive. All these products you see here, okay? All these products you see here are color coded to the vehicle. And we have hundreds and hundreds of colors. Every vehicle that you see out on the road, basically we provide the, the, um, the range of uh, the first range of products and everything is colored to match to the, to the vehicle. Let me show, tell you a little bit about the, the basic and fundamental uh, processes for ADAC Automotive. Picture on your left, okay? This is basically a plastic injection molding machine that in essence utilizes heat to melt plastic pellets. The molten plastic is then injected into a mold where it is cooled down to solidify and make the part. So this starts off basically the, the process for ADAC Automotive and we build the, uh, basically over mold the, 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 the parts that you see here listed in the, in the slide. The picture in the middle depicts our, our robotic system spraying the paint to the parts as they are mounted on the racks. So this is an automated process that uh, enables the, the diverse uh, coats that we apply um, to our products. Several coats are applied for protection, color match, and durability. Lastly, the picture on your right depicts the assembly process where we manufacture the electronics and integrate these components into a final assembly that will then be shipped to over 50 customer plants in the United States. This gives you a very brief idea of who we are. And, uh, and now to share a little bit about the many roles and functions that support this organization, we're gonna see a little video. And, and again, everything in manufacturing is supported like we talked about and, and some of the, uh, the panelists uh, mentioned, right? From uh, design engineering, program management, you know, finance, accounting, you name it. I mean, there's a myriad of uh, roles that are needed to, to, to support uh, major organizations like the ones that, that you're seeing uh, in this afternoon. So if we can cue the, um, the video and thank you for your time. I look forward to the questions and answers. Welcome to ADAC Automotive. My name is Jessica Perez. I'm the Environmental Health and Safety Manager. Here at ADAC Automotive, we make access points for automotive vehicles, so like door handles or um, tailgates, and we make them for the big OEMs, so for GM Chrysler. Even though uh, most people think in manufacturing that you know you just you run the machine or you make the part or you do maintenance on those machines or parts, um, there are other opportunities such as um, human resources, uh, environmental health and safety, accounting, um, or in the finance department in general. most about my job here at ADAC Automotive is um, the culture and the people actually. My role varies every single day um, and I am able to be out on the floor. Um, I can I spend time behind a desk at, at a computer but I get to interact a lot with the associates. Automotive, we do have an internship program. Um, we hold one every summer. Um, you can apply on our website um, and there are various opportunities to um, intern, whether it's with um, my department, the Environmental Health and Safety. We have internships with Human Resources, Accounting, um, any of our mechanical engineering or electrical engineer um, uh, programs as well. Thanks for visiting ADAC Automotive. Uh, we hope to see you soon. If you'd like to um, know more about our organization, you can go to our website at uh, www.adacautomotive.com. Thank you, Jorge. I appreciate that. So we're going to get into some questions and answers. So um, I have a list here. So I'm going to start with Heather. 
um, since that first came in, the first question. And one of the things, the first things was, do you do office furniture and home furniture? Or is it, um, if you can kind of explain that. Yeah, so it's in, so it's office furniture. But what's interesting now is that you'll see that that's such a gray area. Meaning, furniture that you now see in the office is furniture that you'd likely have in your home as well, because it's such it's changed so much. Where you want those collaboration spaces, and and people are you know can work from a couch or at a desk. But what we have found is that um, in the office setting, um, employees still want a space to go back to. So they want collaboration. They want areas. Where where they can go and work together, but the majority still want an actual space that they call their own that they can go back to to have some heads down work. So again, our focus certainly is from the furniture side, but we also have um, uh, uh, just multitude of different types of companies. So we also do outdoor furniture, um, in you know, along with um, we have a fine leather. I mean, it the it goes on and on and on. But focus is the furniture. Okay, or cool. Office, excuse me. Okay. Um, two more questions, and I'm going to go into your video so people get to see that one too. But your second question is, what is the grade um, the grades needed if somebody wants to become a, a, be an intern? Yeah, so our internship program is focused on going into your junior or senior year in college. Mm -hmm. So you would be a sophomore, likely. Um, and that is uh, is um, was just mentioned um, at the last company. It's for every type of position you could imagine. So everything from engineering to design to human resources, IT. Um, we even have a security department. We've had legal, uh, sustainability. So truly across the board. Okay, awesome. Um, and this might be, this kind of leads into it. The last question was, what kind of education background do you look for for um, at Hayworth? So it might be a little wide open, but. It is, it's so wide open. And, and um, but, you know, I also want to point out that that um, when you, when manufacturing is, is just from everything from, right, a, a high school um, diploma or GED all the way to, PhD. So, you know, manufacturing just truly encompasses so many different career opportunities. So, you know, education, I think, is um, one of our values is continuous learning. So that is something that's important to us. But, you know, again, education could be from um, professional development or from uh, getting a certification in something or uh, learning more about um, a particular area that you're interested in. So, um, you know, I, I our value is to certainly continue to learn. Um, but wise of specific job it's it's it is very wide open all right sarah you're up next with a few questions here and one's very similar sort of what education background are you looking for when you're hiring people um, at FlexFab? yeah in our production facilities we do need a high school diploma or a ged um but really for any of the you know like heather and um, Jorge, everyone was talking about, um, you know, it really depends on the position. Um, you know, if you want to go into HR or finance, even customer service, engineering, um, our advanced manufacturing team, it depends really if, I, you know, I just hired a CAD designer. So it really depends on the position, but we do require you to be at least 18 years of age, um, as well as have a high school diploma or, or a GED. Um, and that is something we will help you with if you don't have that GED yet. Um, we will help you because we do have tuition reimbursement. We have helped former employees uh, to attain that as well within a certain amount of time. So okay, hopefully that great. answers your question. Good, it does. And this, I'm going to open it to you and then to some other people because we're kind of in di uh, diff different counties here. But um, what, um, I guess, colleges um, that you're aware of that offers their degrees in manufacturing um, that you're aware of in your area? Yeah, we um, we partnered with the Western Michigan University, Grand Valley, um, Grand Valley State University. We've even been uh, partnered with Ferris State University. They have a rubber and a plastics program. Um, and so we, that's our main, main um, recruiting is in rubber and plastics. Um, so they've got a great program up there, but a lot of the local universities, as well as we have partnered with KCC, we've partnered with GRCC, Davenport, all, I mean, pretty much all the universities within the surrounding counties we have partnered with, and they can fulfill a degree, um, whatever it may be. If it, you know, if it's specific for manufacturing, there's other areas that have programs, but I'd say all the, all the universities and colleges. 
Okay. All right. Great. And you talked a lot about your teamwork and, and your culture there. So tell us a little bit how people, if they have an idea or they want to share some feedback, how do they go about doing that if they want to share that with, say, leadership? Yeah, um, so we have quarterly meetings. Our executive team and our senior leadership team um, host those quarterly meetings. And typically they've been, um, you know, on site. We pull everybody in, obviously, due to the pandemic. They've been been put on hold a little bit, but we've been doing more Zoom, Zoom videos. So I showed you our strategic roadmap. That was all over Zoom. We use WebEx here at FlexFab, but... Um, so we, you know, we have the opportunities amongst um, to share, to collaborate with our teams. And then we have uh, management meetings as well as executive team meetings that we can collaborate and share those ideas with. So that's kind of how it works here at FlexFab. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Brett and, um, and Haley, I'm going to ask first. Haley, tell us a little bit. You talked a little bit about the scholars program and working 30 hours. What's the, the wage structure that goes with that? So if somebody was starting out in that program, what could they expect to make? Sure. So it does start out at $15 an hour right now, which is our base wage that every new hire comes in at. And then it does go up by $0.25 cents every semester. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. And Brett, you talked about finding sort of having those nerves of walking in um, yeah. and, and trying to figure out sort of what, you know, what am I going to do? What do I like? So walk me a little bit through that process of how did you find it? You know, uh, what was it like sort of going, you know, those those first, say, few weeks or months um, working at Bradford White? And what are some of the things you did? Well, what I found out was the first few weeks, okay, trying to figure out, okay, I was a kid that went from school and now I'm learning how to shoot screw guns and and to work on a water heater. Um, so then I started doing that and getting the confidence built up in myself to know that, hey, I went from school and I can do this and found out, hey, there's certain areas in here that I really excelled at in building that water heater. Okay, I've been through many departments in here and so when you think, hey, I might be stuck on this particular job, we have a bidding process here that allows you to be able to say, hey, when that job comes up open, I'm going to bid on it because that's really the one I wanted to do. And so through the years of experience going through all the different departments and the knowledge gained, here I am 31 years later. <laughs> All right. Now, since you are two are together, so you have your masks on, we got a question of how is Bradford White handling COVID? So tell us a little bit how that is. Haley can take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. We have lots of different um, processes and procedures obviously put into place so that we can keep our employees and their families as happy and healthy and safe as possible. Um, every single morning, every single employee and contractor has to go through our screening tent. So that's a temperature check and, uh, you know, are you experiencing symptoms, things like that. So every morning, every single employee has to do that. We also have mask mandates anywhere we're at. Um, if it's a common area or if we're unable to be six feet from another person, um, we're wearing masks. We've got sanitizer stations set up. Um, and we also have pretty strict rules about if you're feeling ill any, you know, any way, uh, right. make sure you call HR. We'll take you, you know, make sure that you're not, um, not here if you do have COVID or any COVID like symptoms, just because we're being extra cautious. And we also do a contract tracing. So that's working out pretty well for us so far. Okay. Awesome. So Jorge, I'll have you take off mute. Why don't you answer that same question? Has, how has COVID actually affected um, ADAC? Yeah, very, very similar procedures and processes that we have to to, to basically prevent this uh, from um, occurring in our facilities. However, I do want to uh, mind everyone. I mean, what you do outside of our facilities is as important as what, the way we handle everything internally. OK, we have had some instances where the activities from outside actually have been detrimental to the performance that we've had uh, within COVID uh, in our facilities. So. Just, just to reiterate, I mean, just got to be diligent and, and have the discipline uh, everywhere, everywhere. But we also have those processes and procedures and everything uh, in, in place. And we also actually started us up today to, to outsource uh, and testing within our facilities because, I mean, Ooh. things are, are bogged down now with uh, uh, having that uh, test results and the, the test processes and that type of thing. So, again, I mean, just... Uh, be very, very diligent in everything that you do and, and 
outside of work also. Okay, thank you. Um, at, another question we have is, is what your personal qualities or um, that would you see or what you, um, when you're hiring somebody, what are you looking for? Say more the soft skills, not so much the technical skills. Attitude, just the, the right attitude. I mean, just having the right motivation to, to contribute every single day. I mean, have a, be willing to come in and be happy that, that you're here and, and you're willing to, to assist in anything that, that you do, right? Like we talked about, there's a myriad of positions, a myriad of functions that you can do in any manufacturing facility, in any enterprise, really. But having the right attitude is is, uh, is very important, too. And it sounds like, excuse me, most of you have this bidding process, too, or of kind of going through and seeing what's open and, and seeing other opportunities that they can, you know, people can move from one step to another. Sure. So there's sort of as soon as some, if you want to go on and move into a different area, there is that opportunity. So, um, Jorge, tell me, what do you love most about what you do? I tell you, never, uh, every single day is different. And and time just goes by so quick. And uh, president of operations, I mean, I get to interact like many of you guys mentioned, but with every single aspect of, uh, of, our, of our enterprise, right? from program management and, and design engineering and manufacturing and quality, you name it, human resources, right? I mean, most of you guys were from, from HR, but uh, it's uh, uh, the, the most wonderful thing that we have, our resources. And that, uh, that somebody mentioned actually, that, that interface on a daily basis with people, right? Interacting with the people and, and, and having them here and all that, that's, uh, that, that's what makes my day. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I thank you for your time. This is wonderful to get to know you um, and your companies a little bit more. So I want to keep um, on track with everybody because they'll be going on to their classes. But thank you for joining us. Um, as I had mentioned, once everyone closes out of this webinar, there will be a survey. So we do want you to um, do the survey and let us know what you thought of um, our speakers and what we had to present. As well, you will find out that if there are any seniors who are interested in pursuing um, jobs in manufacturing, we are offering six $500 scholarships. So within that survey, you can find out information and apply for that. If you um, are watching this as a classroom, uh, your teacher will have information about that scholarship as well. Finally, if you've missed anything, you want to watch this again, you want to tell your friends, your parents, whomever, um, we will be um, uploading this webinar to a Discover Manufacturing YouTube channel. It will be live and or it'll be available um, tomorrow so you can see that. So if uh, please share that with your friends and uh, I thank you again for joining us and everyone have a wonderful day and enjoy this day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.